Hey guys, this is Turok, and today I'm going to go over the next chapter of One Piece, 1057, I believe we're at now. And um, uh, a little recap of something from last time. Uh, last time I, I realized I, missed out, I misunderstood a couple aspects of the, uh, the story. Uh, one being that it was um, that, I think her name is Shinobi, one of the other scabbard members had also been <clears throat> excuse me, impaled by Green Bull's vines and had been shriveled down just like Rizo. That so she was laying right there, laying right there against the uh, on the floor, well being uh, treated afterward alongside Rizo. And I did not recognize that. I, I must have missed that in the action part uh, when they were do trying to defend uh, fend off. Uh, green bull and uh, there was one other thing what was that now I thought there was a second thing oh, maybe not but uh, if there is I'll have to come back to that later but so we have a recap so the straw hats and law and um, kid are all planning on leaving now and we got this mystery uh, uh, being laid out by Oda, some hint the, from, uh, from Kid that uh, he's planning on speaking, uh, finding someone called a man marked by flames. But it also seems like Law might know this person, but they won't tell, they're not telling Luffy who it is. Well, Kid, Kid definitely isn't. He likes to take advan any advantage he can to, um, to, uh, not you know he wants he wants to win and he'll take advantage in any way possible over the other straw hats which I don't fault him for it I wouldn't if I was Luffy even if being a good guy I I wouldn't want to tell a kid anything because the last person I want to have a one piece other than like Blackbeard is someone like Kid given that he uh, has been told we've been told that he's someone who likes to who doesn't care about casualties uh, like uh, collateral damage of sorts of civilians at all in his uh, pirating which is why he uh, he had that such a high bounty on the uh, on himself uh, a little higher than Luffy's was uh, back at Saba Odi which now I just realized that's funny they back then they were both rookies they had just reached Saba Odi and their bounties was 300 and 315 million berries respectively and now they both have reached Three billion, so ten times, exactly ten times for Luffy, and a little less for uh, his has reached a little less uh, kids since then in the two plus years. Now, probably, I'm gonna guess like it's been two and a half years since then. That I think since the time skip, I feel like we've been perhaps about six months out from then. And uh, so they all plan, we're planning on going different directions too. And uh, there's three different islands nearby. And I, I saw something here. I, I think I kind of said this, but I, when I watched Tekking's video, he really pointed out too. It seemed like the map that Oda put on there may have been put on wrong. It almost looked like they were backtracking away from Oano with those three islands. But maybe they, so maybe they just went around those islands if the map is correct when they came into Wano. So... Uh, there's that that I'm confused by, and I saw I'm not the only one that recognized that. Um, and then we also got to find out that something's going to have that uh, caribou, that guy who's been their ally 10 times, but he's really just still a douchebag, is going to reveal where Pluton is to somebody else, probably Blackbeard, which is not good. Which means that it means. Now I wonder, because Blackbeard looked like he was leaving to go somewhere a little while ago. He's taking an opportunity. I'm worried he might be going to Big Mom's place for some reason. I don't know. I just feel like he would, maybe he would want some of the other characters' fruits there, some of her kids. And we still, by the way, have no idea what happened to Kaido and Big Mom. Uh, all these extra chapters, post-arc chapters, and we still haven't found any out what's happening with them. Um, we found out about the, uh, the, the father... Of Odin being back, so that's good. Oh, and Carrot's gonna be the new leader of uh, Zo now, of the nation, the Minx tribe on Zo. And uh, I think 
That's pretty much it. Oh, the big thing, no, no. Obviously, the big thing now that we found out was Buggy has created a group called the Cross, Cross Guild with Crocodile and Mihawk underneath him or with him. We're not quite sure of the power structure there, though given how Buggy is, it would be almost certain to bet on that Crocodile is the real brains here because he used to run his own organization already for a decade or more. And he uh, knows how to man handle those kind of logistics to it with the black market and underworld type stuff. Actually, now that I think about it, I wonder if he was working with Joker to some extent, only in a business manner, to, to gain more resources than that for his own plans to take over Alabasta. And, uh... One second... And so that also we found out the Cross Guild, what their first goal is right now, or the main goal that people are talking about is they're putting bounties on Marine officers, or Navy, yeah, the Marines, right? They call them Navy in this thing, but the Marine officers, some of them are getting bounties put on them in order, I guess, that bounty hunters or other uh, criminals, you know, pirates and other such will hunt to go after them act actively, which is... Uh, a very bold move, but I wonder how much that will really work because the if they try doing this with high-ranking officers, um, vice admirals and such, would they usually have a probably a base or with a I don't know, battalion, a group of other marines that would be around them? So they would have to any pirate or bounty hunter there out in the world would have to bring significant manpower or. Uh, be very stealthy in order to get close to some kind of uh, officer and take their head essentially and escape alive to earn that to get that bounty but we'll see how that goes later and uh, so this next chapter I, I just went through it uh, th I think this will be a rather short review for me because I don't have much I can add to it. this what's going on here is uh, this is the final Basically, the fight, real, the true final chapter of this arc. It looks like, and we start off by having the um, this guy telling the crowd, a crowd of people, uh, what happened with Wano's um, in the battle against uh, Kaido, talking about the the red scabbards and their quest to revenge Kazuki, uh, Odin Kazuki, and how they worked with. Uh, the others to do so. And meanwhile, we're also seeing, uh, right before the Straw Hats are leaving, the um, Yamato, Momonosuke, and uh, Kanema are rushing to the port. And yeah, Momonosuke is pretty pissed off at this point that uh, the Straw Hats left without uh, telling him that they were going to leave. And he, his anger is also making Kanema feel like he has to not avenge, but uh, uh, punish Luffy for making him angry, which I find is an interesting concept. That I, I get what, what it's going for, but it's funny to me that Kanemon is, is going, getting that angry, uh, um, getting that way, and, and instead of being the voice of reason to, with Yamato. Yamato is saying she is thinking that, that he's getting, Momorosuke is getting too angry, but he doesn't care, and it's Kanemon's going along with this. And we get a brief flashback here of all their time together uh, of Momonosuke and Luffy going back to the punk hazard and everything that happened to them where they had their own squabbles. And, um, which is quite a nice way to like tie off all this because this was a big arc. This is a part of a saga that went back. I looked, Punk Hazard was first published in 2012, so we're 10 years. Ten years ago, we started this bit of uh, this saga, which had us go against other foes, which were not were adjacent with this, with the uh, uh, the final bosses of Big Mom and Kaido. So we had uh, Caesar Clown, who was uh, working, uh, making the smile fruit, which were Kaido uh, that then. Well, yes, and then, uh, then, what's his name? Doflamingo was then selling off to Kaido, 
and then he, Caesar was also simultaneously doing experimenting on stuff that Big Mom had contracted him to do, and uh, he, he actually blew a lot of that money. Apparently, he already realized that what she wanted was impossible, so he was working with them, and then, so he got taken out, and then we had to go to Dress Rosa, and that arc was very interesting in of itself because it brought in a lot of other stuff about the world government and uh, their knowledge of what was going on with Dolphlingo and Dolphlingo's other connections. But he was also just part of this one, another step on the ladder to get to Kaido. As the plan initially was to get rid of him and let Kaido do that stuff. So this is a, and then we got, we had to go to big fight, big moms for a little bit, but that was not, uh, it was almost, I felt weird initially to become, to be like a side arc kind of thing I thought, where they were going there and not deviating from going to Kaido. But that worked to bring Big Mom in. I guess that was Oda's plan you could, to bring them together and have Big Mom and Kaido be the bosses together. Uh, a nice way to tie that in and get them both kind of almost out of the way now because now this looks like it's going to the final saga. The, the end game is coming, it, it appears now. So we got like Shanks and uh, I know I don't know that Luffy and Buggy are new Yonko, but now I don't know if Buggy's gonna be like an adversary per se to Luffy now. It, it this really feels like a setting up Shanks and Backbeard to be some kind of antagonist uh, to some degree. Something that the the next half of the saga will focus on. Them, I should say not that Shanks will be an antagonist, although he's going after the One Piece of going to pick it up apparently to, like it's easy as pie for him. So not sure what that means, but. The uh, that him and Blackbeard are the next two. If uh, actually because of their history together, we know that Shanks it knows about Blackbeard's intentions to some degree, and we'll try to warn Whitebeard about it a couple years ago. It does feel like this is playing out to have them lined up next. So yeah, so we had to do. We got took care of two Yonko in this saga, ten years in the making, and now we're up to dealing with these other two. It appears. And, um, yeah, that'll be it. So this saga continues, this chapter continues with, uh, the others about to leave. Uh, <laughs> but so Luffy is quite surprised when he's coming up to, uh, attack. Momorosa is coming up in a rage to, I don't know, and he tackles Luffy. Uh, what ends up happening here though is that he just he starts crying his eyes out like a little kid he still is. Uh, Momonosuke and he wants them to stay. And uh, he really gives this heartfelt thing about how you guys, everyone worked together to help me. I, I can't, I don't know what, how to be without you guys now. So they really became his family there. Uh, so Luffy, what Luffy does here is he gives him a cop a flag, um, maybe a copy of his straw hat flag, and oh, okay, yeah, that's right. So essentially, here, Luffy now is placing Wano under his protection, much like we've seen Whitebeard or Shanks have done uh, here, because he tells him to put the flag up, and if any assholes basically come to Wano, say, "Look at that flag. Those are who we're al aligned with." And uh, and so Yamato says. Uh, yeah, so Yamato confirms too. Yeah, we confirm that Yamato is not planning on leaving just yet to join the Straw Hats, which is quite disappointing because I wanted to see more of her interaction with the other crew members. Though we all probably already got an idea of what certain ones would do. Uh, hint, hint. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Sanji or uh, Brooke. Uh, so we can so we end this off here with um, with the uh, others about to leave, <laughs> and it was a leaving. Uh, fucking kid has to get a jab in to Luffy and uh, Law. They really let this kind of stuff get under the skin. He's jabbing at them for going off to going out on another port that's safe first. And uh look like they were about to fight each other and are they gonna fight each other? And so they just leave. 
So this ending part now leads shows as the basically the tying off this arc, but you have a continuation of the this guy telling the other people the pop uh, people in this um, kind of like an auditorium it looks like. Maybe that's where I do I do a play or something too. Tell talking about the ending of the story of how, of how they defeated Kaido and Ana Rochi. It looks like Hirori and Otama are there too. No, is that Otoko? That's Otoko, I think. Are there with the um, with the with the guy uh, commentating the story? So Oda's just really giving a nice send off since this is like a, a this is an area too that's this this is essentially feudal Japan and he did this this play uh, format for the the whole saga and he, he's tying that back in now by having this probably end off the way a play would maybe for the that type of play and I forgive me I don't remember the name but uh, that's the end of it there so. Um, yeah, I really don't have a lot to add to one like this. When there's when there's less plot going on, I'm not good bringing what there's to do. But uh, it's a good. That was a good way to tie it off. I guess it, I figured we already had enough of this. But I thought we would. That he had done. I thought Oda had done plenty to tie off the arc. But I understand what's going on here, so I'm fine with it. I just hope we the next saga. That's basically I was hoping for a little more with the outside world again. But he uh, Oda's dropped enough that. I'm, I'm content to wait for a little more. So that's all I got for you today. Come on.